All right, everyone, at this point, we need to start pressuring YouTube to stand up to, for some of its independent creators because it's become a trend that hit pieces are written about individuals or groups that are, you know, heavily on YouTube or elsewhere online. Uh, usually they're defamatory. Sometimes they're just trying to stoke up a pitchfork waving mob. And the idea is like when BuzzFeed says someone is, is a Nazi or this person's extremist or something, the idea is that they want to get them deplatformed. They can't openly call for a raid, but they can appeal to their user base, say, hey, look, a horrible, despicable person is on a, a platform that you might use. Go get them. That's basically what it boils down to. The New York Times already did this to Infowars once and got a strike on their account some months ago. I believe that it was appealed successfully at the time. But even worse in this situation is, is a second component. I'll get into that in a moment. What happened is that Infowars has suffered from four content strikes uh, in, in the last few days. Uh, and this is partially predicated, I believe, on hit pieces by groups like the New York Times, CNN, the Wall Street Journal, the usual culprits. The for-profit corporations, they can't stand InfoWars because InfoWars is not the same as like maybe what I do. They actually conduct their own first-hand journalism in addition to analysis. So they're a full-on media corporation and, and they are technically missing link media. Don't get me wrong. They're not technically alt media at all. They've got an alt tech presence and they certainly, you know, they, they don't endorse corporatism in the standard legacy media sense, but they're a group. It's not just a single user or a, or a loose confederation thereof of totally independent individuals. There are standards that they employ in their broadcasting and so forth. They got the media deals and, and advertisers and stuff, the corporatized sort of product line, you know, the male vitality and stuff. That's what Infowars is. In that sense, it's a bit different. But the legacy media really, really hates them for this because what they see is, well, oh, shit, here's, you know, they've got, you know, Paul Joseph Watson, Alex Jones, all these different figures. They're growing very rapidly. We're declining very rapidly. Shame on them. They're draining our audience. And so they attack them constantly. It's as simple as that. It's for, it's for monetary purposes. They want money. What YouTube needs to do is make it clear. Independent individuals and groups that are using YouTube shouldn't be harassed by the legacy media. They should come out and condemn the hit pieces, in other words. Because we see it time and time again. I got name dropped by the Wall Street Journal in an article about the weird extremist side of YouTube where I was called far right and a horrible person, basically, by the same dude who went after PewDiePie. And instead of taking a stand on behalf of its users who built the platform and continue to build it for this day, YouTube has generally remained mum. And I, I think here's the reason why. Here's what's happening. YouTube is trying desperately not to piss off the NGOs and legacy media groups. Because instead of writing hit pieces on Styx Hexenhammer or Alex Jones or Mal New or something, they'll start writing hit pieces against YouTube. And they'll start trying to convince that same mob to constantly harass YouTube as a company, go after its advertisers, and do the pitchfork waving, soccer mom mentality, morally haranguing, temperance era pearl clutching thing. That's essentially what that boils down to on that end. At the same time, though, and, and I can show you this demonstrably because of the structure of the story. They're also trying not to piss off their individual users too much. Can you imagine what would happen? Riddle me this. If Infowars got kicked off of YouTube, what do you think would happen? The next day, there'd be a thousand videos by major users condemning it. YouTube would suffer catastrophic amounts of outrage from its own audience, probably have to reverse its decision anyway. Because it'd be like, hey, you kicked in, you know, obviously they're getting attacked by the New York Times, they're getting attacked by CNN, that's the reason they got these strikes, now you're kicking them off. The reason that we know they're not trying to piss off the audience too much is because Infowars has four strikes, right? What do we know about YouTube's strike system? What would happen if I got four strikes? What would happen if you got four strikes? Bye! You're gone! At the, ve at the very most, if you're successful in appealing a couple of those, you'll be able to come back. But until then, your channel is gone. You have been banned from the service. You are suspended. You can't use YouTube. That channel is dead. It's gone forever. But Infowars has so many fans and such a hardened fan base. What do you think would happen if they actually kicked him off? This shows there is a sort of wrong of creators that have large enough audiences that they are treated a little bit differently from maybe smaller users. I think that's actually, the fact that YouTube is compromising its own rules system is almost as bad as the fact that Infowars is getting strikes on stuff that's illegitimately being struck anyway. It's like, okay, Infowars is a partner, they've got like, how many millions of fans does Infowars have? Like the Alex Jones channel? Millions of subscribers, I believe, several million. It's a lot of people. <laughs> it's getting up there towards YouTube diamond status. 
you know, if PewDiePie does something, he doesn't get treated the same way as, as you know, the average user does. I think that's concerning too. Honestly, having different sets of rules or different actions, deference shown to larger creators, deference in one case of giving manual review before striking someone's content would make sense. Like when the algorithm struck down my video and it got removed, I appealed it. Three days later, the strike goes away because it was, it was their zombie algorithm acting up, I guess, on a video that was nonetheless about the New York Times. Very mysterious, in part about the New York Times. Giving us deference, larger creators, I mean, like, you know, people are at YouTube Silver or something and above. It's a few tens of thousands of people. It's not a large group. Giving us the deference of manually reviewing attempted strikes and assuming innocence instead of guilt would be wonderful. But not taking down the channel simply because you would uh, have the ire of literally probably tens of millions of people the next day that's a little bit different. That actually makes me uncomfortable. Now, I don't want to see Infowars struck down. I think the strikes are all probably illegitimate. They have the right to free speech. This is the New York Times and the CNNs and the Wall Street Journals and the BuzzFeeds and the Voxes and the Huffington Post complaining about a competitor. They openly attack one of their competitors by encouraging them to be censored at this point. They've done it to Gab, too. They tried to label it a horrible, bigoted site. Kick them offline. The domain registrar kicks them off. They get a new one, one that's maybe more insane. And they're like, well, you know, it's terrible. It's an echo chamber of the far right. And it's like, yeah, because you've driven a lot of people to alt tech by censoring. Now you're trying to censor their, you know, new sites, too. It's ridiculous. Uh, but no, YouTube needs to take a stand. They need to make it clear that they're not going to continue tolerating Rating articles and hit pieces by groups simply because they are corporate media. Because it's beginning to severely decrease trust among the user base in YouTube itself. Look, there have been many cases where larger creators, they get these illegitimate strikes because of rating or because of YouTube's own algorithms. They always appeal and they almost always get reinstated. Dapperton was reinstated. Bearing was reinstated. Sargon, I believe, went down at one point and was reinstated. Everyone has this problem. I got a strike on my account. I appealed it. It took three days, but it went away. Something is terribly wrong. This doesn't happen to CNN. This doesn't happen to the New York Times. Why are they even on this platform? These are large multinational media corporations. They shouldn't even have a presence on YouTube. YouTube initially was about individuals making individual, totally independent creative content. It wasn't about, hey, here's the corporate news you can turn on the TV and watch. It's the same fucking thing. It wasn't about that, and it was a better YouTube for it. What they should do is debilitate their streaming services. Get rid of them all together or tell them, hey, you can either have a streaming service you're paying for and shut the fuck up about our independent creators or we're going to kick you off. That's what Google should do. Look, they've got unlimited money. Absolutely unlimited money and power. They don't have to deal with these firms. By the way, it decreases their chances of ever running afoul of a monopoly law if they just kick those, tech, those big media firms off. They're not the ones driving people to YouTube. Who comes on and, and buys YouTube Red or streaming or, or whatever the hell? Who buys YouTube Premium in order to watch CNN anyway? No, they'll go to CNN's channel and watch clips and then usually downvote them. That's the way it works. It's the way it should work too. So I condemn this. I think it's fairly obvious that this was predicated on a pitchfork waving mob attacking Infowars videos and of, over a stink by the legacy media complaining, well, Infowars has this, Infowars has that. The content you have taken down does not actually violate the TOS. It doesn't. It simply doesn't. The terms of service were not broken by Infowars. They shouldn't have a single strike on their channel. And then you made the problem worse because you gave them four strikes and didn't take the channel down. Thus showing, hey, under some circumstances, yeah, a person could get strikes. Their channel's fine. They can't stream for a while. Okay, so Alex Jones has to pre-record. He has to make a second channel for his streams. Are you going to kick him off if he does? I don't think you're going to kick Alex Jones off of YouTube. I think you'd find very quickly that even people on the left would be really, really pissed off. They say, oh, well, you know, fuck us, basically. Fuck people who are independent. CNN says we're bad, so there's something wrong. They do this all the time. They try to, they try to repeat a lie often enough so people just assume it's true. Just like when the far left says that I'm like uh, an extremist or something. It's not true. They're hoping that at least within their echo chamber, people just passively accept it. 
because they're too dumb to watch my content. They do the same with Infowars. They've never even watched their broadcasts other than they'll, they'll watch a clip on Right Wing Watch of Alex Jones saying something that's meant to be satirical and theatrical in the first place. And from that, they extrapolate that he literally goes around with a tinfoil hat on. No, the man, the man is sane, trust me. He's built a multi-million dollar company. His, his nice cushy job is he can sit there and give his opinions and make millions of dollars doing it. He sits in a nice air-conditioned studio with a hundred people on his staff and everyone knows his name. They, they don't necessarily like him, but they know his name. He's super famous. Yeah, he's a branding genius. That's what Alex Jones is. He's perfectly sane. Some of what he says he openly admits, hey, and it's hyperbolic. It's meant to be entertainment. I believe in what I say, but sometimes the way I say it is meant to be theatrical. Well, the, you know, fucking obviously. But, you know, YouTube doesn't get satire and sarcasm. That's why a lot of the people that are being abused are comedians. Comedians are the ones disproportionately abused by Twitter, too, because they say things that would seem offensive, in, uh, but it's within context, it's meant to be comedy. It's meant to be funny. It's like, uh, it's like uh, not what James Gunn is saying, people like that, but people make like edgy humor all the time. And it's like you invert the meaning of something and that's the joke. The joke is the inversion, the double entendre or whatever. Computer doesn't understand that. And apparently, you know, uh, at least for their own you know, commercial purposes, the New York Times don't get that either. Now, I have nothing but contempt for the legacy media. Most of what they're spewing with regards to tech is totally untrue. You can demonstrate it's not true if someone has enough of a, an attention span to use YouTube for 10 minutes. New York Times knows that it's lying to people, just like CNN knew it was lying when it said it was illegal to read WikiLeaks releases. Enough is a fuck enough. We need to stand together as creators and condemn this sort of thing, and YouTube should condemn it too. We are your creators. We are YouTube. Not the New York Times. They're your competitor. Start acting like it. That's about all. Peace out.